I'd like to uh, declare the um, meeting for the immediate tourism committee um, today, Thursday the 9th of September, open. I'd like to welcome we've got Mr. Wally from Eastern Society um, to us. Um, he's on our Zoom and we are being recorded. Um, item number one on the agenda is public participation. Um, no one is registered to speak and no one is allowed to speak via Zoom. So we'll move on to item number two. Apologies for absence. I believe there are none. Full committee chair. Fantastic. Swiftly moving forward then to um, item three, declarations of new declarations of interest based on the agenda. Um, do I have any new declarations of interest? Are you dealing with um, rents tonight? No. Okay. No. So, none, thank you. And item number four is the approval of minutes um, held on the meeting the 18th of March and the 5th of May um, and the delegated decisions on the 10th of June. First of all, are there any comments to be made on the accuracy of the moment and uh, minutes? Great. Okay, so I'd like to propose those minutes. I'll second those. I'd show to carry the minutes. Thank you very much, committee. Swiftly moving on, it's a full agenda tonight. We'll move on to um, agenda item five, chairman's announcements. Um, I've just got a, a couple of things. Firstly, um, I'd like to welcome everybody back to face-to-face -face meetings. Um, it's the first time I've chaired a face-to-face -face meeting. <laughs> a little nervous if I'm honest but it is good to see everybody um, and it's nice to see everyone around the table as opposed to with a little box um, on the screen and uh, it has been interesting the length that some of you have gone to to uh, hide the fact that uh, to find a quiet space in your houses and um, to do your food meetings on um, busy household evenings so much appreciated over the last 18 months for that. Um, I'd like to also thank, obviously, the staff here at the Town Council for everything they've done um, to enable those Zoom meetings and to start doing these face-to-face -face meetings, committee meetings again. Uh, I'd like just to, to update on a couple of things. Um, one that um, keeps coming up and something that we'll be moving forward with, um, hopefully, is um, the fountain. I've had some notes from um, East Grinstead Society. They've done a lot of research on this themselves. And um, they've been working in conjunction with um, South East Water and also the Drinking Fountain Association. So they've done quite a lot of research on that. They've got some costings um, and they're very keen to, to, to move forward with projects. And the funding to do restoration, they have got several funding streams in mind that wouldn't cost the town council anything. Um, and uh, Julie and I are very keen to meet with them and have a discussion moving forward on the fountain um, and what, what that, how that will take. I will report back after we've had a meeting, I'll report it back to the committee at our next meeting. Um, I've also visited the Cruise Road Cemetery and I've seen the massive clear that's taken place for phase one. There was an awful lot of clearing done. Mm -hmm. um, it was done quicker than expected, I think, in the end. And um, there's more detail of that in the, in the report. Um, Sarah, but um, fingers crossed things are moving moving well on that now. A um, lot more to do because the second phase of obviously the lower part is, is a bigger project, but um, things have started and are on track, which is always good news. So Margaret's Loop, um, there is nothing else to fill you in on this project. It's a little bit of a stalemate at the moment. Um, Jackie Russell from uh, West Sussex is, is working um, with us on that and, and working with rail pathways, but, but it, it is, as I say, just to still make, um, but I will report back as and when we have more information in the future. And finally, it's just a, a note really from us that I'd just like to thank um, Oakhurst Builders um, for putting, erecting the, the beacon once we take, took it down from, from here at Eastport to um, Kingsfield. Um, and they erected it not once but twice as it had to be relocated. So I'd just like a note to thank them. Sorry. At their cost, yes, at their cost. So that was very much appreciated. Um, so moving forward now, 
to um, item number six, which is the um, tourism report from our new tourism manager, um, Alice Fletcher. We do have Alice with us, um, Chairman. I'm not sure if she's managed to get her, um, her video and her uh, microphone working. Hopefully, if she has, she'll be able to take some questions. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Town Clerk and Chair. Um, I haven't met all of you yet, but hopefully I will in person at some point soon. Um, I haven't got a huge amount to say, um, as I have only kind of just started, but I... Um, um, there's lots of work happening at the moment, so I'll have much more to report on next time. But if you have any questions, please let me know. So have you got any questions on this sector support? Councillor Peacock. It's not really a question, it's just to say, well done to yourself, to mm -hmm. Uzi, Tom Clark, and, um, and um, sorry, Alice. Thank you. Um, it's for getting the um, wayfinding sign project up and running. It's good to see, it's taken a few years to get that done. It's good to see people start to use it. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Um, chair. Yes. I'd just like to say, so, yeah, thank you to the chair. Thank you, Alice. Uh, good report. Uh, and I understand you take the initiative uh, to do a little pick at the end of the month. Is that correct? Yeah. That's, yes, that's, that's correct. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, Alice, that's public services. So we have reported that to them last week. But yes, there will be a little, little pick for the, uh, the the Great Green Week, I think it's called, is Alice? Something like that. The Great Green yeah. Week. Um, yeah, which will be coming up um, next month. Yeah, but this has come through the tourist office. So, you know, it's probably yeah. this committee, isn't it? No. Well, so she, she's actually invited everybody to, uh, to get something. That's it. Okay, sorry, I didn't quite hear all of that, but I think okay. Julie, Julie said that's coming under community and public services. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Any other more questions for, for Alice or anything on her reports in the tourism office? Just a, just a quick one from Major. What yeah, items then. of merchandise are there? Uh, it, it's, on your report, Alice, you say about items of merchandise. Um, oh. Know. Yeah, so we have some East Grinstead souvenirs which have um, been around for quite a while in the library. Um, so, and it's it's a very very small revenue stream that um, we've got. So it's things like um, fridge magnets. Um, I love East Grinstead teddy bears, um, postcards, information, and um, just just little tourism souvenirs that people can collect. And we have had um, people coming into the library to to buy those um, this month. People who've just been visiting East Grinstead and wanted a little memento of, of their visit, which is um, very nice. Um, but I was just looking at different ways of how we could um, perhaps expand that little uh, revenue stream and also clear pre-existing stock that we've got. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. So if there's no more questions, um, can I please um, have these, uh, this report noted? No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on, agenda item seven, we've got estates and community services reports. This is Merrick has ever done a beauty comprehensive report. Um, are there any questions? Yeah. You do have um, an item to um, consider. Yes, please, oh, Chairman, so. on the item. Oh, it doesn't take to me up before. So the item for consideration is um, the winter maintenance, and it is the um, the winter the salt or grit bins. We have. Um, Mrs. Chairman, can I ask a question before, just on the general report, or are you going to go? I'm going to ask questions after we've gone to this after this item. Yeah. That was my mistake. Sorry, councillor. Okay. So we've got um, the winter and grit bins. Um, about whether we should buy any more grit bins for the town. And if so, how many would we buy it at this? Because it's an ongoing project. Please correct me if I'm correct. Yeah, would well. you like me to give a little instruction? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, what this is, is the committee decided um, several years ago now 
um, some of you have sat on it, um, but, but we decided a few years ago that we would stop buying brick bins and that we had 68 in the town, which is quite a lot. And so that those those brick bins would be um, we, we, we wouldn't add to them, but if there was a a call for a brick bin to be placed in in another part of the town, we would have to look to see if we could relocate. So that was that that's the position we're currently in. Um, <coughs> West Sussex County Council have uh, they they fill the brick bins. We don't fill them. They do. But at the moment, if we have bad weather. What happens is that um, we are able to then go out because we do get a surplus of grit from West Sussex, which we store. But we don't have unlimited storage. So we have enough to be able to refill each bin to about half full um, if they are emptied. So partway through, through the winter, if we have a particularly cold spell. So what was being suggested is that maybe um, we could we could just revisit this because every year when we have some bad weather, some frost, we get requests from councillors and the public for another area that's asking for a little bit for, for a brick bin. So we said, well, what if we just put, we, we reintroduced brick bins and we started putting more brick bins into the town. We could have as many as you like over a period of time, obviously, because they do cost. Um, but then rather than refilling them, because it takes us a full week to just refill them to half full if we have to refill. So rather than doing that, um, and sometimes it's no more than just a few bucketfuls that go in, to be honest, it may not even get to half full. We thought, well, if we had more available around the town, which are filled up by West Sussex in the first instance, then um, we would not refill them during the winter months. So a very clear sign on them to say, this bin, this bin will not be refilled, please use it sparingly. Um, and uh, then that way, potentially, you could put back into the budget to increase the numbers, and you could end up with one on every street. But it's it's just to revisit the original decision that that was all. <coughs> so it's what I'd like to know is if, if anyone would like any more bins around the town. So first of all, Councillor Sweatman. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'll take this down probably be a bit clearer. Um, I personally think we should stick with the 68, as the town clerk has, um, has just said. My fear is that if we get a really hard winter, uh, the people at the moment are used to, apart from having the bin filled up once, they're used to having it filled up as uh, half full a second time. If that's taken away, I think that will be detrimental. Councillor Peacock. I, I would to agree with Councillor Sweatman because also I'm guessing that the six day of where they are now are probably in the areas of town which are most affected by snow so my feeling my worry would be there wouldn't be enough for top ups going forward yeah. obviously it depends on how many we increase to but the question would be where would we get the extra salt with the increased capacity well, so we would say we wouldn't we fill that do it we would say we wouldn't fill that so that would be it should be a one-off that would be my concern mm. did you have your uh, I wanted to say, why can't people grip their own bit of road? And why does the council need to grip people's roads? If people want to grip their own bit of road, why can't they do it themselves? Well, the highways, highways Authority are required to look after roads, and uh, it is part of their obligation. Um, they don't have to provide grip bins, we provide grip bins. They don't have to do that. Um, and in other towns around the, around, around the district, what will happen is that rather than where, where they don't provide a grip bin um, and you have a particularly cold snap or, or snowfall, um, you'll find that the county will come along and just dump the, um, the half ton bags on the sides of roads at various different points for people to help themselves. But uh, grit is provided as highways are required to keep them safe. That's a very open-ended conversation about what is safe. Um, but you see, um, uh, pathways, driveways, private property is not to be gritted by the grid that's provided by the council. Yeah, I agree with it. That's yeah, no, just uh, totally something different. But can I ask about the, um, I was one of the guys that took them at, uh, three of the uh, hanging baskets this year. I'm very glad it was too. Do we return those at the end of the year so that they can be refilled? The Sorry, Tammy, can we bring that in later on? We just, we just deal with the grip bins at the moment. We're just on the grip bins. No, but that's, that's previous item. 
We'll just do the group rinse, then we're going to questions on the report. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll just be jumping around. So, um, my, as talking to the committee, then my proposal would be for this um, at the moment is not to move forward with getting any more grit, grit bins. Do I have a second? I'll second that. <laughs> and if we can vote on that, please. And we're still going to top them up, presumably. The ones we've got will top yeah. up. Okay. Yeah. Rather than have someone spread it thin once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all we've got enough to do is once. But yes, okay. that's oh. fine. So we, we, we stay at we stay at 68 with with one top up. Yes, yes. 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 That's, yes. that's fine. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. One is a yes. Right. And we move forward. Any questions on the report? So no, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, <laughs> Tell. No, no, that's actually right. Uh, no, I thought, it, I thought I'd missed me opportunity. No. no uh, the hanging baskets, I, I, I did take three this year and lovely they are at the front two. Uh, do we actually uh, return the hanging baskets? So, don't you need to explain that? Can we be nice and, nice and loud for the, for the microphone? Because I've got somebody on Zoom who's saying that they, they can't hear us at all. Um, but I can see the microphone is certainly moving. So, can we just please make sure we're speaking nice and loudly? Um, if we're talking towards the, the, the microphone. Um, yes, councillor. They, Thank you very they, much need, indeed, they need returning. Bless They're you. used every year. Great, I thought so. However, you know, just to clarify that they were purchased hanging baskets, not taken. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Amos. How much is the taxpayer being forced to pay for the construction of fairy houses? Nothing. They're done on scrap. They're done by the handyman on scrap bits of wood. Thank you. Are there any more questions? No. So I'd like to the, take the rest of the report as noted. No, 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 Thank you. The next item agenda is eight, uh, which is burial services. Uh, we have a report here from Miss Jones. Miss Jones is uh, not actually here this evening. Um, but have you read the report and are there any questions? Sorry. Have you met Miss Jones? Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. How's the message? Uh, just a comment on the um, uh, Mount Noddy. Thank you very much for the two benches that have been put down in the new memorial ground. We, we spent a pleasant hour the other afternoon sitting there and it makes such a difference. And it is filling up, isn't it, quite rapidly that area. But it looked very, very pretty. And I'm glad to see that we've now got the bench. But they weren't hurt to the addition, they were they were moved on somewhere else. For, yes, terraces yeah. yes. down to but it was something that we wanted down yes. there. So um, we were just able to do it without any cost. Yes. Because they'd already been purchased. Yes. Uh, are we on to Queen Joy Yes. Um, yeah, I'm just it, it sounds they're making tremendous progress. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Which is great. And they're uh, very interesting about the uh, finding that uh, headstone um, in good nick. Um, what's the situation now on the on the back? Just um, they're obviously still there. Yes. Um, are we slowly getting rid of them, or, or haven't we moved to that stage yet? We have indeed moved to that stage. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, the the doors are up. If you go down West Street, um, I mean, obviously, please bear in mind that the drive is owned by the Belfry, mm -hmm. but if you go down West Street, if you just have to toddle in a few feet, um, you will see that the, 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 the doors uh, have been fitted into the oh. fences mm -hmm. where they come out, and you can mm -hmm. see that they are there. Um, so, yes, any, any, any bad, uh, we don't know yet how many have left. But any badges that have um, come out of the set and come out of the um, fence can't get back in. That's why they're pattering down my fence. Sorry about that. They've all moved in with you, Edward. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, Chairman, if I can just also say, just so that you all know, we had a contact from a lady over from um, America doing some family history. And she contacted us yesterday and wanted to um, see a grave in Queen's Road Cemetery, which would you believe 
is right in the area where we've cleared all the badges. So we were able to take her in today, um, but very carefully, because obviously it's very um, uneven ground in there. And we do have the, the rabbit holes and we have um, the, the badger um, disturbance to be mindful of. Um, but she was thrilled to be able to see um, this, uh, this ancient um, uh, ancestor's grave. Um, and it's been the most fascinating story, which I won't bore you with now, but um, it's a lady who lived in the Hermitage, um, in Hermitage Lane, um, long before the White family had it. And um, uh, she, she actually died in a um, fire at the Hermitage, which, um, which gutted the inside of the house. But the lady came from America, and if you, were to, if you see her tombstone, which we will do at some point, no doubt, it's got her name on it, and it actually says, from um, of Philadelphia, USA. So it's uh, it was interesting. It was very interesting talking to this lady today as well. And uh, those of you who have been in the town for a significant number of years, I might actually want to ask you at some point a bit more that you might be able to tell me about some of the things in that cemetery. But it's been very interesting, Jeff. Thank you, Councillor Peacock. Thank you. I'm touching on um, Green Street. Um, Greens Road Cemetery rather. Again, it's a project that's taken many years. It started when I was chairman, mm. and it's taken a lot of perseverance to move this forward. So I think we often, as councillors, thank staff for their perseverance, but I think on this occasion it's definitely needed because it hasn't been easy to get to this stage. Follow up question to that is um, obviously we put a bid into the National Lottery for funding for refer. Do we have any ideas about? Um, about uh, any, any, any taking forward any further ideas or refurb of what the just looking at how we can to look at it for uh, funding yes uh, yes we've got lots of uh, various different um, grants which uh, Harry's making applications to mm -hmm. and uh, we will take it forward we were turned down by the lottery um, mm -hmm. so that so that hasn't happened but there's uh, there, there's plenty more out there. Um, and we will we, we will keep going. Can I ask you to speak up and you speak? You're very softly spoken, Councillor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hopefully that's better. Uh, Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Matthews. Yeah, a couple of meetings back, um, because of the pandemic, uh, there's a lot more inquiries into people's ancestors, especially on the American way. Um, does that still continue? I'm still getting requests, you know, uh, to go back on the records? We do from time to time. I'm very pleased to say it's not been overly onerous this year because obviously we've had a lot of um, ashes interment, a lot of burials, and that's kept um, John and uh, Sarah very, very busy. So um, I'm pleased to say we haven't had a huge number, uh, but uh, but this, this particular one, um, so it, it was interesting, um, which is why I mentioned it, yeah. yeah. I think that will also be helped moving forward because um, there's been a lot of work to get the, the, the records yes on mm -hmm. the piece so that it will become easier in the future. I think the idea is it won't be so onerous. Yeah, so no, hopefully no. that will continue to, yeah, just I, to be the case. I see that uh, Mr. Chisholm is going to be digitalising the old cemetery records and yeah. so everything on computer makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No more questions on the report. I'd like that the rest of the report noted. Okay. Noted. Thank you. Moving on to um, agenda item number nine, delegated decisions. The decision as the Mount Muddy Memorial place for public grieving as noted in the cemetery report from Miss Jones. If I could have that noted. <laughs> Thank you. And um, item 10 is East Court Live. Um, there's a report from Eastport Live. I don't know if, how many of you attended. I know a lot of us were there, despite the torrential weather, and it was <laughs> torrential. Um, it was a very, very good <coughs> afternoon, and a lot of people came out, even in that awful rain, to hear the bands. Mm. And at the end, I mean, the the dancing that was going on on the terrace was amazing. It really was worth all that um, effort that everybody put in. So thank you to the, the team in the morning and then um, everyone in the, office, uh, the evening for clearing up. It did, it was my first clearing up session, it did seem to go very smoothly. And the afternoon 
wasn't a washout. Um, so that was that that was amazing if you if you, if you went there. Um, is there anything anyone wants to to talk about the the, the report on the anything anyone's got to ask on it? No, yeah, now they've got a motion that I want to put forward. Is um, this motion um, to put forward to require all advertising of free town council events, for example, in Spot Live, to be advertised with um, immediately following the word free to have an equally large font and prominence um, paid for by East Grinstead taxpayers. This motion has been submitted by Councillor Amos and he would like to speak on this to the committee. Thank you. I think it's very important that everybody knows where their money is being spent. And I think sometimes the word free can give a false impression for some kind of magic money tree whereby everything is actually free, when in actual fact it's taxpayers that are picking up the bill. Now, admittedly, as the town clerk will no doubt say, East Court by was advertised as free entry, and I think that is better than merely saying it's free, but I would still add that it would be preferable to have paid for by East Grinstead taxpayers as opposed to brought to you by East Grinstead Town Council. Because ultimately, if we didn't have the taxpayers <laughs> to support our finances, well, we'd just be a bunch of individuals sitting in the room with virtually no power whatsoever. So I think it's very important that this motion is put forward. I did a bit of research into the East Grinstead Town Council uh, Facebook page and I saw five adverts. Admittedly, four of these are from the District Council and they all say free on them. Not free entry, but just free. And that's the kind of thing that if we were to run as a Town Council, that should not occur. I don't think they should be labelled as free. They should be labelled as um, free asterisks and then paid for by East Grinstead taxpayer. Thank you, Councillor Amos. Do I have a second for this motion? Thank you. Thank you for your time. There's no food work for discussing that any further. Thank you so much. I think if we do, we do use the word free entry, and I think that does cover some of what you're saying. And um, I know it doesn't go as far as you perhaps like, but um, it, it, it does represent what we do as a town council and we do offer the people in our community. Um, item 11, um, autumn winter events. You've seen the report, you've got, you're talking about the Christmas lights and um, community radio and, and the proposed big reveal on the 20th um, of November. This is just for noting. Thank you. And item 12, um, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee um, Working Party. Um, we have met and uh, various um, um, ideas have gone to, to, um, to group and um, we'll be moving forward with those ideas and they'll be coming to the next meeting. Um, they are including things, um, East Court Live, the first East Court Live um, will be on that Sunday. The idea is to mimic and follow what the um, Palace are doing, starting on a four day programme. We're trying to mimic that, which will be included, but um, no plans are confirmed yet. So I don't really want to put everything down there um, at the moment, but it will come back to the next meeting. But that the idea is to follow that four day programme, which will include afternoon teas, um, East Court Live, um, making a, a ceremony and, um, and other events. Have you got any questions? Councillor Osborne, I can see you. Yeah. Um, previously, I don't like to keep saying this, but um, to take the load off the council, we invited the chairman who did it, me previous years, invited the lo local organisations to a meeting to see what they would do that obviously wouldn't involve the council, but just enlarge the whole sort of celebration and, uh, and also for coordination like the lines and everybody else, and they all met around the table and they all came up with ideas. I wonder if you had any plans to um, invite local organisations to a meeting to see what they can contribute? Yes. Good, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. Yeah. I don't think they need to elaborate. <laughs> yeah. 
The other thing I'll raise with you, and you were somewhat skeptical about the cost of it, and that was doing um, yes. a crown for all the primary school children. Um, now, I, I, I could understand your skepticism because uh, I think things may well have changed since 1977 when, when I produced this. When I chair, we, uh, I'll pass it around. This was what was given to all the primary school children. It's a crown in a case, a commemorative little case. It didn't cost anything um, because Lloyds Bank provided it. We were the bankers of the um, of the, um, the town council that day. Brian Rock was was the, was the manager of the bank. I'm pretty sure we didn't. Um, and the crowns were bought for they were face value of 25p at that time. I don't know if they're producing crowns as now. Whether the Bank of England they got wise to this one and they charge more money, but. I think it's a I think it's a legal tender, and I think that they ought to be available for 25p. Um, the bank certainly provided the the cases. They did all of this. They didn't put the bank's name on it. It's got East Princeton 1977 on it, and the crown. And all the little kids trotted off home with us. And I think, as I said to you, that um, I mentioned this on Facebook some time ago, and lots of people aged 60 and God knows how old said that I've still got mine. I mean, a lot of kids went down and sort of bought five wood vines or a packet of sweets or something at the time, but lots of them kept them. And um, I think they're a good memento, and I think they're quite a good thing you could actually sell at a small profit in um, as a souvenir. If I just pass that around, um, perhaps the clerk would get some idea. If you, I mean, we used to have bank managers in the Clark had one of those, so? but not in Scrimston, but the clerk does oh, have one from 1977. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the, the, chair, the, the chair person has one from 1977 as well. I still have one right, from 1977. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Osborne. It is something that is going to be costed by yeah. um, as a potential um, right. gift, but it does it come down to costing yeah. and, and that costing is going to be done yeah okay. as a potential so once that costing is done and then we'll be able to come back i wondered if um when you do do the costing i wonder if it's possible that uh, you could ask the clerk if you could speak to the bank and tell them what the banks used to do and see if they'll do it again now come on back that west isn't it we can certainly try yeah i mean they produced it and yeah. they will get the crowns and and then it's just a case so I worked it out with something if you, if you could get to, if you had to pay for the crown and you didn't pay for the case, it, it would cost about 500 quid, 2,000 bits at 25p each. That's if the crown is still available. This is why I think it's 25p. A, a costing exercise. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I, was, I, I, think, I think it's a great idea to have something commemorative, and, and I think that. Um, Great stuff that the, the, the junior committee are working on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I think that um, two things that you've actually mentioned come together here, Frank. I think it would be good to talk to the uh, junior schools and find out. I mean, things move forward. I think essentially the idea is brilliant, but I think that things move forward and there might be something that the junior schools and the head teachers could come back and say, actually, great. How about producing this? You see what I mean? Uh, and and big, as I say, things move forward. It is a unique, an absolute unique jubilee. No other monarch has ever had a platinum jubilee. It, it's, it's well worth commemorating. I think mean, the idea itself is great, but it might be that they come back with something that we all might consider a bit better. Thank you, Town Mayor. It is something that I intend to take to the head teachers right. of the local of the, of the locality. So uh, that is already on I my agenda. <laughs> so I shall get to be reported to in one go, but certainly um, I'll carry that forward. Are there any questions? Anything else to ask on that one? Thank you. So moving swiftly on now um, to um, agenda item 13, the use of the terraces at Eastport. I'd like to consider um, whether the terraces can be used for external group meetings and whether a higher charge um, is applicable. The report outlines on pages 16, 17, um, the conundrum that we're, that we're having. Officers do not feel particularly passionate either way, um, but we need to make some consideration for the use. Committee are recommended to allow the middle terrace at Eastcourt to be hired out with terms and conditions 
that a booking fee to be agreed for social and family gatherings, but not in conflict with other bookings and hires of the Mansion House at Meridian Hall. The middle terrace, for those who don't know, it's not the one outside this window, it's the one lower down. This one would not be hired out because this one goes for events when they have weddings and everything, this one is included in that. Is there anybody who would like to propose that? Well, I was, I was, uh, oh. personally, I think that it's a great idea because you've got to have some interest. And, and I think that, personally, I think, well, I like to propose that it is considered a franchise. Do I have a second for that proposal? Thank you. Can I ask a question on that? Then? You can now. Now, <laughs> yeah. now um, we have a second. Right, so I've got a party of 25 people. I haven't booked it. And I said it's got to be stored. We turn up and we go down on the terrace. We bring our chairs with us. Are, are we going to be told to clear off? <laughs> really? Mm. If this proposal goes through, yes. At the moment, um, if we have groups of people turn up and set up, I mean, have had it. We have politely asked them most of the time, but very politely, <laughs> she will ask them to, to please leave. I mean, it, 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 it depends what's going on. If there's nothing here, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But we've had large groups suddenly turn up, sit down on the terrace, um, and as we even had a wedding reception um, set up down there, um, and then. Now, of course, we've got weddings and things coming back, so we're having to move people away so that they're not interfering with people who have booked here well, and are sure. expecting to use it. As I said, the officers don't feel particularly strong either which way, but we felt this needed to come to your attention. Yeah. yeah. So I think the first hand up that I saw, sorry, was Councillor Amos. I wanted to ask, is there any common ground in each community, any ground where politicians can't tell people what to do? Because I think it's very important that there are some areas that are open to everybody and nobody, including us, or the police for that matter, can tell them what to do. Are there any areas like that in these Grimstead? I think, like you said at Public Services the other day, there's no piece of land that's not owned. And therefore, from that point of view, whilst recreation grounds and um, the, the sang and uh, the East Terraces and in Pente, King George's Field, there's all these various places around the town but ultimately, somebody can decide to pass terms and conditions. So the answer to your, the answer to your question, I think it's no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I pity the inclusion movements for that. In regards to the saying at the bottom, would that still be open to individuals to yes. have their garden party? So that's um, really just... Well, Because I, only... I would be fine with this proposal if they could go to the to the lower terrace, but of course, I think councillors will probably go, oh, but that's going to affect the mid terrace when it's let out. So it, it might get continually put back. And if that's the case, it'll be against this proposal. I think that's exactly what we had in mind was okay. that if we were saying, please don't be on it, that's what we've said to people so far. Please, you can go on to the mid Sussex land because that's fine. But again, we've got to be a bit careful about that because um, during the pandemic, there were various groups who were doing things on the Mid-Sussex land, and if it becomes commercial, Mid-Sussex can charge them to be there. Mm. A group of people turning up and mm. having a nice little family get-together, no issue, not a problem, that's exactly what the sign is meant to be there for. But there have been some local groups who have got together, and then they've been selling teas and cake and this, that and the other, and uh, in those cases we have had to say, I hope you've got permission from Mid Sussex because you should have to be here. The land is, their land is bookable. Same as ours, if it goes through, it's bookable. Doesn't mean you're always going to enforce that, but it's about being bookable. And anything that happens commercially down there, Mid Sussex should at least know about it. When we do um, anything where we spill off the terraces, Eastport Live, for example, we do tell Mid Sussex we're going to be there. We don't get charged because we don't charge people to come to Eastport Live. If we did, we would be charged for use of their land. Thank you. I'm going around this. There's a few hands come up. I thought you were in order. So, and the next one is, is, is uh, Councillor Peacock, please. Thank you. I, I generally support this as long as it's the middle terrace. 
Where would ball games fit into this? I know a lot of attention has been given this in the report to the flower beds, etc. That would be ball games would be included. We wouldn't want ball games. So the volleyball situation wouldn't. No, no, no. We, 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 we no, no, no ball games. No, 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 no ball games. No ball games, and we're not we're not saying you can't play tag, but no, 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 no ball games, no football, no volleyball, yeah, no, no formal That's sports cool. down there. That's the main stone. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm, I'm just a bit concerned with this one. I mean, it's now, I think, because we've, we've always sort of included the top terrace with weddings and they come out <laughs> of the Meridian Ball or here. Um, and it's easy to actually rope that off. And it's pretty obvious that it is a, a private function. I just wonder how easy it's going to be to actually police the other terrace and to actually either rope it off. Um, and is it going to be extra work for the staff to make sure that it's only the people that hire it that are allowed on it? I've just got little bit of a reservation as to how we, we're going to actually manage it. Um, I can tell you at the moment that it is possible to put down um, some of our ropes to um, to put a sign on them to say no access today, private party. We have done that um, when we had um, a couple of big weddings here in the last few months. Um, but otherwise, no, it's, 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 it's not always easy. No. Um, tell me. Oh, bless you. No, I, I, um, in Africa, again, uh, you know, it's very much. I mean, the laws of trespass uh, are very difficult in this country because all land ostensibly belongs to the Crown anyway, and you either own the freehold or the leasehold or, or whatever. So uh, it's very difficult, unless somebody's causing damage, to actually throw off anywhere in your back garden. Uh, but the fact is, that what's, uh, what the concern of the town public is, and our concern should be, that uh, the, the possibility of damage and, um, you know, people not, uh, people just showing up and causing damage uh, without any sort of restriction. Uh, so I think, I think it's a very valid uh, case. I, I personally wouldn't like to see it roped off. But uh, I, if you've met our town clerk, she's quite a formidable lady if somebody's using something. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're doing something to detriment. And I'm, I'm quite sure that she'd know uh, who's a challenge. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Osborne, you were uh, next. Yeah, I, I share Councillor Amos's um, concern about this, really, because uh, there was a time when you, you, there was worry about the fact that not enough people were using East Court. Now it's become popular and we're responsible for that in a way by having the sort of um, having the concerts up here and having the music up here. So people are more aware of the place. And I would have thought that the top terrace for a wedding is perfectly adequate. I mean if these people presumably are coming from the Meridian Hall, you could fill that up about five times, you know, uh, the Meridian Hall rather would be, you know, it's much, much more than that area there. So I, I don't see why, you, why you've got to do the bottom terrace. Uh, the only thing I would sympathise with, say something could be done about, is if in fact there's a commercial operation going on there and then people should be told, well, we wouldn't, uh, it's, it's for public generally, it's not for com a commercial operation, but I don't think you should restrict the public from using a public park, a public place. Um, they pay for its upkeep through their rate, as Councillor Amos will tell you. So why shouldn't they have access to it? And I think if people have got a wedding, they've hired the Meridian Hall, they've got the top terrace, why, why are they restricting the public from access to the, the middle terrace? I'm not, I'm not happy about this. But. Okay. So, um, and of course the clerk may be formidable, but she ain't here at weekends when most of these things are probably happening. Are you? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm, I'm uneasy about this. I'm okay. not sure what it's necessary. I mean, if there's a real problem, a specific problem, we can deal with a specific problem, but not a, not, not a general rule. Yes, can I just ask Mrs. Merrick to come back in on that? Yes. I think the yes. council has been slightly got the wrong end of the okay. stick, and I just think it might be helpful if you explain a bit more. Yeah, thanks. As I said, I'm not here to argue whether it's a good idea or not a good idea. The, one of the issues you're, we're beginning to have 
that's okay to say it's lovely everyone's here, but a family of 25 would turn up in the lower terrace, coming 25 cars, as far as I can understand. And the other day, there was not a parking space to be seen. It will have a detriment on the hiring of the buildings mm -hmm. because parking is becoming more, I mean, it will re, we will need to readdress it again at some point. And it's a shame too, because it is a nice little, nice little area for the parking. But but to say it's fine is okay, except if it's your wedding and three gazebos go up and Lovely. 70 people go on to the lower terrace, then you might not be quite so pleased. Well, but I, 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 can I, 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 I sympathise with that? You say I wouldn't object to that. If somebody could put gazebos up and they're doing things like this, I think you can restrict that. But I don't think you can stop them. You can say, oh, if you can't put gazebos up on this terrace, that's fair enough. Or you can say you can't stick a great big barbecue on it, or you can't sell ice creams and hog roasts on it, you know, anything like that. I can see you've got a very good case for that, but not people generally turn out with a few chairs. Sitting, I don't think you know, I, I, it's I, difficult to right, before, before I come to you, sorry, Councillor, certainly if I can come back on that. So, so this terrace is not going to be included. So people will walk here and everything, and they won't be walking here when it's weddings or anything like that. If you say there's an event going on. Yeah. The next terrace down, people that are hiring it so that they can um, um, gather and, and have lovely part, you know, not a part of, there wouldn't be music, it would just be larger gatherings, they would hire it for that. And um, people would, other times, still be able to walk through and walk the dogs and, and the children ride on the path on their bikes, getting from one place to the other. That would still be happening. It wouldn't be stopping it completely from people going there. It's when people want to say, I really want this area for an event, can I hire it? That's what we're talking about. And so that then people won't be able to, or they would say this is a horrible space, so you can't come and do your volleyball. You can't come and, and have, you know, set up a, a, a full on, um, a picnic for, for 25 people with all the chairs around and put your gazebos up and put your little box of music on. I think that's the different difference between the two. Just to clarify the points. Chairman, I think you're absolutely right. That 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 was that was the driver with yes. regards to the report bringing it back. Was saying at the moment we have we have we have we have no rules yet around the bottom terrace at all. Um, and so it was a case of saying, you know, did you want to suggest that it could be hireable, it could be bookable, yeah. which potentially gives an income for groups to meet? Um, mm -hmm. Or did you want to say, no, actually, we're perfectly happy with the way that everything is, is. And, and that's it. But just bearing in mind that we have noticed that there are some groups out there who are meeting and having their little meetings and their formal gatherings. And, uh, it's becoming a regular, time. which is becoming a regular thing. They're meeting every yes. Tuesday at large and it's grown. Before I come back to you, I do need to go to um, Councillor Sweatman, who's been waiting very patiently. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, I don't think this would have come to this committee if there wasn't a problem. And mm. um, I certainly witnessed it myself. Uh, what this basically does is give us effective uh, control on, on the terraces as to who uses it. Uh, well, for, for various functions as previously mentioned. And, and also when we got a wedding here, um, okay, uh, the council also was saying, I mean, the top terrace, but when you got a wedding and taking photographs and you've got noise down on the middle terrace, it's, it's, it's not good. I, I think our Alice um, Barrows, are, who, who uh, deals with all our weddings, has done a fantastic job. And she's built up a very good reputation for this town council. I mean, even through the pandemic, uh, people got put off by the weddings, uh, waited uh, 18 months or more, and they, they're coming back because of the reputation. But now I think we do really need to have effective control on, on that terrace. I think once so that this they... is a good proposal. Thank you, Councillor Sweatman. I think when they go to the other side, if they did move them down to the side, you know, yes, they could still have to put their gazebos up, but they're that little bit further away if you have spent a lot of money on a wedding. And like I said, it's the control of putting putting something in place, whether we act on it now or later, but having some control in place is what we're talking about. Um, yes, uh, before I come back to you, Councillor Reynolds, um, Councillor um, Matthews has put his hand up and he has had, had yeah. spoken already. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Councillor Sweatman. I think he summed it up. Uh, beautifully. So I, I agree with that. Thank you very much. 
That too cuts very well. I'm somewhat on the side on this on the of the arguments, but I think the argument that's been put forward by Dick and, and John is too expansive because once we make the middle terrace essentially the private property of the town council, then the people that have made the bookings on the middle terrace will start saying when people erect gazebos or have lots of noise on the lower terrace, oh, but we book this area and they're disturbing our activities. So that's not really on. It has to be pushed further back and it goes on and on and on. So this argument that you're putting forward, although it may support the right conclusion, it, it proves too much. So you need to put forward another argument for your position to be coherent in, in some way and not expand to that ridiculous conclusion that I'm sure none of us want to see. So I, before I vote, I'd like to hear another argument in favour of your position, but not from the justification you've given for it. Thank you, Councillor Emmas. I think um, really the big, the, the difference between the middle terrace and the top terrace is the fact that people pay a lot of money for their weddings and their functions they're doing, because it goes with the Meridian Hall. And I think that's slightly the difference. That, that's, I'd just like to point that out. Well, could I just ask on the mid-terrace? How much would they be paying for the mid-terrace? Could you say, we're paying too much for it, then we should be able to expand to exclude the other people from the front? We haven't got to that stage, Councillor Moss. But I need to know that information before I come okay. to the decision, and I think other people do too. Because okay. otherwise the argument will be raised on, oh, they're paying too much for this. We've got to exclude them from the upper bit of the lower bit. Yeah. Sorry, and so, before I go back to anybody, um, I'm going to Councillor Dooley, because he's not spoken yet. And then I'll be going down to the town mayor and then to um, Councillor Sletman. It was just an answer. I, I take on your concerns, uh, Charles, but I think, as we've quite rightly stated, we don't have control over the lower terrace. That's in Sussex. So we don't, am I right in saying that? We don't control the lower terrace. The lower terrace, yeah. <laughs> so so, so it, it, it would be a little bit like, you know, if I, if I book a, a party in this mansion house here and there's one that's all now a party, it, it, it kind of it negates that anyway. Yeah. So let me just be clear on that. Thank you so much. No, I, I, I understand uh, Charles' concern, and I think that what we're saying here, it will require wisdom, and, uh, and it will require the wisdom of the staff to know what's the plan to make sure that things are action. I, I'm absolutely confident that we can discuss that. Thank you. I'm going to close this debate in a moment. I'm going to go to yeah. Councillor Sweatman, uh, Councillor Maidstone, and then and then we're going to move forward on this. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Ten o'clock, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I, I think what we're determining here tonight is uh, this proposal in principle. Yes. Uh, costs will obviously be determined at the GP. Yeah. So that is where you have your chance to either vote for it or not. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, Chairman. There, there, there's no cost been proposed at all at this point. That's amazing. Thank you, Chair. Can I just clarify that I've got a wedding and they're in the Meridian or in, in, um, in the mansion and they're using the top terrace. At the moment, what happens if a party of people descend on the middle terrace? And what, you know, I mean, there isn't any control presumably, apart from a member of staff saying, could you please move down to Mid-Sussex land and turn the music down. Um, but absolutely right, you're absolutely right, Chair, uh, uh, Councillor. The, um, uh, and, and, and this is indeed issues we have had. Mm -hmm. We've had um, a wedding coming up onto the, into the, chain of the, the top terrace, and uh, we've had to ask groups of people who have um, gathered on the lower terrace um, if they would please move along, um, mm. and uh, they can be, um, as I said, rather unpleasant. Because mm. I, I, at the moment, I, despite the fact that the, the sign does say you are here with the permission of the town council, um, not just a, a free for all, um, it does say that. Um, it's um, it, it's very difficult for people to to appreciate that. Why should the wedding have more opportunity mm. to use the area than they do? Yes. Um, whereas if it's uh, a bookable piece of land, mm -hmm. then we can say the top terrace is booked and therefore we're not having groups down here today, so please, please move along if, so, if you were to agree with us. So if there was, there wasn't a booking, but that still happened, are we then going down and saying you haven't booked so you can't be here? I think 
that's where it gives us the flexibility and that's mm -hmm. where I said about terms and conditions so yeah. I think we've got to take that, that that's where you're taking a realistic point a reasonable point of view mm -hmm. if you've got a small gathering of people down there and there's nobody else here at all I think that would perhaps be a bit churlish yes. for us to go down yeah. and say please move mm -hmm. if however a group of people have turned up and they fence an area off and they're having mm -hmm. a lovely picnic and mm -hmm. they're clearly stopping other people coming on and using it yes um to the same way then of course we might then go down and say you haven't booked mm -hmm. but uh, it's about being reasonable it's, 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 a diffi it? it's yeah. very difficult they can book it and make a nuisance of themselves can't they? they can. so if they book it you haven't solved the problem all you've done is taken a few bob off them yeah, and they're paying a few pounds when somebody's paying thousands yeah, I don't, for I mean, a wedding. I mean, you need maybe you need some rules, but you don't need to book it, you know. I think well, that's we need, so, so moving forward, so uh, just, just last one, Casual do me one thing, and then I'm going to go to, yeah. to a vote on this. Yeah. So, if you could last, last point, please. It's just, it was just the point that if someone books the wedding and we sent no one's booking that, are we going to then control the wedding for not spilling onto that because they're not paying for that area? Mm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That would be something yeah. if that was what the committee wanted us to do. That's just, what we yeah, do. Just, oh, so do we charge extra? At the moment, we don't. We pay extra for it. At the, mo yeah, at the moment, if, um, at the moment, um, it's it's, part of the... they can just go onto the entire area, yeah. mm. and um, and actually the, the lower, the, sorry, the middle terrace, one, the middle yeah. terrace has got some lovely areas for photographs. Yes, yes. absolutely. I'm just yeah, playing devil's advocate. The people that might say, "Well, I wanted that area, but I couldn't have it because that was there." But you're letting them use it for paying for it. You know, you could have these kind of things come up. So you've got to. So, um, all being said, I'm going to draw this to a, a conclusion now, and I'm going to take this to the vote. Because in principle, we look at this, and it goes to F and GP to be looked at for costings, um, and it, so this is going to be a vote on principle, and it will come back to the committee with costings before it is accepted. That's good. What is the actual proposal? So the proposal the that we consider the terms of conditioning costings of hiring out the yeah. mid terrace and we'll take that for costing to f and gp and then it will when, we, when we've got costings it will come back to this committee for approval is that approval on costings and terms of yes mm -hmm. can, I yes. can i propose an amendment to that yes <laughs> can i propose that we look at the same time we look at the alternative and controlling the situation because um we have no we have no rules on what what can be done all you're looking at now is charging. I think you've you've identified a problem and you've come up with just one solution, and that is charging. And I don't think charging is going to solve your problem. I think you need to look at other solutions, uh, such as um, ground rules for it, that we can actually maybe have a sign down there or something like that. But certainly rules as a in addition, if you like, or as an alternative. I don't think that should be something whether it should be a second yeah. uh, a second thing, it should be something yeah. not something different. Councillor, you want to propose an amendment. What is your amendment, please? An uh, amendment is to alter words or to replace no, my, words. My amendment is, uh, well, I'll be specific. <coughs> uh, my amendment is that we also we also consider ways of controlling um, the use of the middle terrace uh, as an alternative to charging. Okay. So, if I can clarify my proposal with the amendment. So, we, we agree, the proposal is to agree in principle so looking at terms and conditions, costings to hire the mid terrace, and a, an alternative solution if necessary to the situation of people abusing the mid terrace. Can I please have a show of hands? Oh, can I please have a show of hands? I have not, I've got about four words there, so you're going okay. to go through that again quite slowly, please, because you are, you, 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 you go away from what's in there. I need to get this exactly. Please say again. <laughs> What, what have you got? I've got to agree in principle to consider terms and conditions. That's terms and conditions <laughs> yeah, of the usage of the mid terrace, okay. the cost to hire, yeah, and to consider an alternative solution to. Sorry, to consider an alternative to the problems caused of wrongful use of the mid terrace. Is that what I said? No. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm not sure. I'm not sure now, Frank. I think it's not very for what you were looking for, but it's because you, Councillor Osborne, wanted to add in also consider ways of controlling the mid terrace without charging. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I've asked to control, to look at other ways of controlling it when it's not being used yeah. correctly. Well, that's my proposal. That's my. That's my. So idea. that's my proposal. Has everybody got that? Because I can't do it again. Okay. So is this? The no, it, it's, all, it's only one. It's only no, one. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Right. It's not on one of the looking at this that we bought, yeah. voting on that. Yeah. Not, not anything else. Right. I know he's come up, Frank's come up with an amendment, so we need to second that. You, you, know, you actually right. proposed at the beginning of this conversation. Yes, yes. It? and it was seconded. Right. Right. So, so the proposal on the table is actually the proposal which is here already, right? right. So it's not your proposal, Chairman, I apologize. Yeah. That's all right, no, please so correct me, I've had been... wars. So the proposal we've got is committee are recommended, recommended to allow the Middle East Port Terrace to be fired out of terms and conditions and a booking fee to be agreed for social and family gatherings when not in conflict with other bookings of hours in the management of the hall. That has been proposed and seconded. However, Councillor Osborne wants to add to that and to also consider ways of controlling the new terrace mm. without charges. Yes, yeah, so, so, so without I'm, I'm interested in, in solving the problem, not actually charging for it. And it seems to me that was the main. I think the only thing trust. I would say is, um, is before anyone seconds um, that that, oh. that that proposal is, is as as the as the original proposal says, at a booking fee to be agreed, and it talks about terms and conditions. That could be part of that. So what I'm saying to you is, I don't think that your amendment's necessary mm -hmm. because it's coming back with the booking fees. So at that point, you you could say you want to have no charge. All right, if you're going to talk about it again and got more it's information, yeah, I won't yeah. make life difficult for you. I've done enough of that already. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've got me round in circles. You have, <laughs> Councillor Osborne. <laughs> I think you're going to get a second bite of the cherry when you just see what actually it's, this it, means. It will have to come back yeah, to okay, the well, Okay, I'll go with that. Make life easier. So, so yeah. back to the original proposal, which has been seconded. So can we please That's take a vote on that proposal? Thank you. I'll just have to say. It was just a vote to delay the discussion, wasn't it? That was a vote to delay the discussion to the next meeting session. Yeah, when you've got more information. When you've got more information, which Councillor Amos you requested because yeah, you wanted no, costing. So, so um, right, that is all on the agenda for this evening. Yes, yes. So I'd like to declare this meeting closed at 8 pm. Thank you. Well, <laughs> Please stop recording, Thank you all very much.